I on my oh. um, counter out there okay. the new schedule is out. October 2014. Mm -hmm. That's good. Thank you. When does the remuneration program kick off? Well, that was going to be a question I was going to ask you, whether during this meeting or afterward, but um, uh, I think it can kick off any time. For the life of me, I can't remember how we ended up uh, working with budget, um, where those items fell in the budget, but um, we can start at any time. You want to, so apparently it's because both of ourselves here have a flat with the question, so. In two weeks to the agenda meeting, and you want to maybe expand a little bit then? Right. Okay. Um, Bob, anything for uh, Carl? Mm -hmm. Mr. Lou? You sent me an email about a cage that you don't have in place to keep it or something? Or? Well, it was a, a dog trap. It was a large trap that. Do you have that, a key to the garage? I don't. Would you like a key? Sure. Okay. I don't want to bother you. Okay. Well, be fine. no, it's not. Uh, but uh, a lot of times I'm not around, mm -hmm. so we'll get you a key then. George was kind enough to get it for me and put it away last time, so that was good. Okay. I don't use it. It's the first time in you know, the time I've been here that I needed it. Okay. Anything else? Council, we kind of went through already. Uh, Justice. No, I don't have anything. My report will be in tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. Um, <coughs> sorry, Carol, I'll skip over you. Skip. Sorry. I don't have anything. All right. I'll take a couple minutes here. Um, my thought is to have a the staff meeting next or two weeks from today, maybe at 6 o'clock, an hour or so before the uh, agenda meeting. Um, what I'd like to really concentrate on is a couple of, uh, I was actually thinking of setting some uh, objectives for some of the teams here. Um, and then I'd really like to go over the voucher process. Um, I know Andrew Lani has been very patient. Um, it's really not too hard. Um, they'll show you how to look at the budget, where your lines are, what the numbers are. Um, I can make up the spreadsheets for you. So you can put them on your computer. So all you have to do is go in there and change the date, um, change the amount, do a save as, print, staple it, and give it to Ronnie, and we should be good to go. So I'd like to go over that uh, at the staff meeting too. Um, Actually, I, don't, I, I think it's kind of moved because the staff is on the issue. Everyone who submits anyway, Michelle, is fine. But maybe the members of the board do a benefit. Yeah, so we'll start the staff meeting, we'll go over the vouchers and we'll explain to everybody how the lines work. Um, and then maybe do some, some housekeeping for the, uh, the year. Um, I need to remind everybody the town has instituted a procurement policy. Um, I still think we read the paper every day that, you know, revenues are going to be down, taxes are going to be down. Not taxes are going to be down, sorry, taxes are going to be up, revenues are going to be down. So it's going to be critical, again, the board watches our spending here. Um, next Thursday, um, I'll ask Tim Bishop to put it on the web, but McDonald Engineering is going to be in here to talk about the corporate report. Now, as everybody maybe remembers, um, there's been some failure of the product, we'll call it, on the main district in the water. Now, a corporate report or a report was developed by an engineering firm, and um, so I'm going to ask Doug Cole 
to walk through the corporal report with us. Um, I'll also ask Tim to put it up on the website. Um, in that corporal report, there's going to be some estimates on the cost to repair um, the main district. Um, I think there was some uh, maybe a misunderstanding that there was, you know, there was money in the line and there was no cost to it. There is cost to it. Um, whether we have money in the line or not is a different story. I mean, I've never heard free, so there is a cost to it. I want to make sure the residents of the water district are, are acutely aware of what the what the program is and what the, the town's going to do to, to remedy the issue. Um, while Doug is up, I'm going to ask him too to talk about Norman Skill, the FEMA, and NRCS repairs. Um, we have a contract in front of us tonight where hopefully you guys will agree to sign or for me to sign um, to kick off the Norman Skill repairs um, with the FEMA and NRCS and DEC. So there's two pieces of property up there, our piece of property um, at the well house, and then there's a uh, Mr. Hayden's property that um, the NRCS uh, has uh, approved some monies for us to spend, not to protect Mr. Hayden's property, really, but to protect our water lines that run along Route 7, you know, in front of his property. So um, we're going to try to kick that off this year. My intention is to work with Doug Cole to build contracts so when they break ground, the most we're hoping the town has to put out will be maybe a startup fee for the construction agencies. We're hoping that the bids will come in saying they won't get paid till after the work is complete. We're expecting you know a four to six maybe six week uh, interval to, to finish the work, um, and then when NRCS and DEC pay us, then we'll pay the contractor. So hopefully no cash out of the town's pockets. Um, we have been approved for all the funding, but um, it's government funding, so sometimes it takes a while to filter through. So again, Doug Cole will be here next week to talk about, or next two weeks from tonight, to talk about the corporate report and also to talk about kicking off the Norman Skill and his project plan and the uh, amount of work that's going into it. Refinancing the water bonds. So I met with uh, uh, Mike Quavis' partner, John Mano, uh over the holidays, actually the 31st, um, about refinancing the 10 water bonds we have. For um, So I'm actually sending Mike back uh, to his office tonight with uh, the last few years uh, audits. Um, it sounds pretty promising. Um, Glenville just refinanced their loan that they had three and a half million, I think, and we're looking for two and a half million to refinance, and they saved a pretty good dollar. Um, uh, anyway, so what we're hoping, and speaking with John Mano, is that we <coughs> could do this in the first quarter. <coughs> so if it's, you know, obviously you're bringing back the, uh, and I think I forwarded you guys the, uh, the board, I think I forwarded you guys the, uh, the financing for Glenville so you can just get an idea of what <clears throat> the refinancing cost is going to be plus how much money they're going to save as far as uh, lower interest rates. So there's some math we have to do, but I'm thinking we can still, at the end of the day, they save the uh, water districts uh, a pretty good dollar and then maybe we reduce the uh, term of loan. So that's coming along. Um, E code is coming. Um, I think that's again going to be uh, a benefit to the ZBA, the planning board, Dan Marciniak, um, Gino. Um, they're getting our codes all up to date and uh, in electronic format, so uh, that should be coming along. And I will work with you over the next two weeks to get that dog ordinance complete. <laughs> Um, I have an investment plan that Mike Quavis is suggesting we put together. So it'll be an investment plan for the town. So when we have a couple of funds, whether they're park funds or what kind of funds they are, we'll have some guidance from the town board as a policy of where to invest the town's funds. So we're 
you know, we're making sure we're investing in a nice, safe uh, uh, vehicle. Um, so I'll be presenting that at the agenda meeting for the town to, to look at also. And hopefully approve as part of the uh, maybe the February meeting. Um, I also want to work again with Gino and um, that escrow uh, policy that uh, Vic Benson from the ZBA uh, put forth. I'd like to bring that to the table in the next in two weeks too. So for the board members, it's going to be a, a long meeting next Tuesday. So rest up. <laughs> two weeks. Two weeks. In two weeks. Yeah. Well, can I emphasize the question? Sure. You just mentioned the e code. Um, we were able to find money or funding for that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because, so it's already been for four through? Well, it's six in the doctor's thing. Okay. Because I thought last time we were going to try to find funding and then we were going to go from there as far as you were going to check with Iowa. Yeah, we did. <coughs> but weren't we going to have to vote again on uh, whether we went with it or not? You were going to we voted on it. Okay, I guess we thought that that was to find funding for it. I remember what that may have been misunderstanding. But I guess we thought that we were going to see if we had to get funding for that project. But now you said it's already coming to us? So we found funding. Okay. Was that in our budget or was it outside funding? No, it's in our budget. All right. Um, then we're going to split it over the three uh, three budgets, so the 2012, 13, and 14. Okay. No, I guess we thought that maybe it was coming back to us when we found funding or something. I guess that's what the question is. Well, I'm going to ask Gino again to look for grant money. Okay. I mean, actually, I gave Gino a couple more. Um, well, Mike uh, Quavis gave us one from, of all places, Canada, the Royal Canadian Bank. Who gave money to Glenville? So that was for five thousand, and there was another, uh, I think one or two that I gave uh, Gino to start researching on. So um, I'm actually going to ask him uh, a lot of the department heads to start beating the bushes for grants and funding, because um, uh, well, they could we could use it and. Uh, I think it's a wise thing. Yeah. Anything else, Bob? No, that was just a question I had. Mr. Esposito? Yeah. And Mr. Edwards? Yeah. All right, um, we'll close the, that piece of the uh, meeting and open the uh, floor up for public comment. Step up to the, uh, well, you stand up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jim Bavoldi, Vernon Drive. A couple things. Um, I'll start with my first concern first. We're a small town. That comes as no surprise to anybody here. We, uh, you guys are all our neighbors. Our employees are our neighbors. We try to have a nice neighborly town here. I'm getting some very unpleasant news filtering through to me and to other neighbors that there's an unusual level of acrimony here in this building. You can deny it, that's fine, I understand, but it, it concerns me, and I'm not alone. I mean, I go have coffee, I stop at Top Steiner, I run into this one, I run into that one. I've heard it more than once, it's a concern of mine, and it should be a concern of yours. That's number one. Number two, we're a rural town. <clears throat> Most people up here own property like I do. We all have a lot of trees, brush, what have you, on our property. Uh, it's... You know, the summertime is tough because it's dry, it's difficult to burn any of this stuff, it's difficult to get rid of it. Uh, it really, there's a revenue neutral way for us to solve this problem. One mile from here, our has got a brush dump. Okay, so if, we, if you charge us a fee, let's say $20 uh, for a dumping fee, and you give that, you negotiate a deal where you can give that to Rotterdam, who basically owns that dump, or controls that dump, then all of the neighbors here who have issues with wood, brush, that kind of stuff, rather than taking a chance of burning it, which is a problem in the area for, because it's been so dry over the summertime, 
it's restricted a lot of, for a few months it's restricted, you can't burn it. Technically you can't burn anyway without a permit. So to me, I think it's a logical thing. You know, try to work with Rotterdam, it's a revenue neutral thing. Charge us 20 bucks, 25 bucks. And send that money to Rotterdam so we can go dump over to Lawrence. The other issue, the one about the acrimony, I think you know what I'm talking about and I hope you guys think about it and address it. And you can ask me, more if you want, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Any additional comments? I don't have to stand up. Right yes, you do. <clears throat> no, no, I'm not to stand up. Um, I agree with you as far as comments being made. Um, you know, for months and months, we've come to these meetings and have heard everybody has to have an open mind and everybody has to compromise. And for the most part, I haven't seen that. In some, in, in most areas, I haven't seen that. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to any one finger point, none of that, okay? I'm just saying what I have observed through these meetings, um, you know, everybody wants people to kind of come up and volunteer and participate and be involved in this and that. And when you do, you if you don't agree or you bring up an issue or, you know, you're ruffling people's feathers, so to speak, it, 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 it's like you, you're on the chopping block, okay? And, and I'm going to tell you as far as the, the company is. Um, I'm on that committee, as you well know. You're there, the referee. Um, I feel that my recommendation that if any future committees, um, I don't think the same person should be the chairperson of more than one committee. Uh, I feel that if you're on the comp committee and the planning committee and the zoning committee and whatever other committees are formed, it shouldn't be the same people on every meeting. I think it's a conflict. Um, it raises a lot of conflict. And I don't think people that volunteer their time should be bullied or harassed by email. I've had to have people blocked from my email. So I don't even get the notifications anymore of when there's a comp meeting. You know, I wanted to participate in that wholeheartedly. And I feel that when I have been at those meetings, I'm ignored, I'm shunned. I'm not, I, that's like I'm not even there. And you've seen it yourself. I don't think it's right. I don't think it's right for me. I don't think it's right for anyone else in this town to be treated like yesterday's garbage. Not when someone's volunteering their time and wanting to do good for the town. That's in part. Um, I think there has been much in the paper in the past where, and again, I'm not finger pointing, but this is what has been brought forth. So I'm only commenting on what I have seen, been a part of, and have witnessed right here. I, I'm not bringing up anything older things that I shouldn't. My opinion, okay, and the way I see it. Um, if people are going to make comments in the paper and have the gumption to do it in print, own it. Everyone knows that those articles that have been in the paper in the past, who they belong to. And if you're going to make the statement, and you're going to have enough nerve to put it in the paper, have the responsibility and own your own comment. People will have much more respect for one another. If, you know, if I say, oh, you know, oh, you know, Joe Blow did this or whatever, and I put it in the paper, but I don't sign my name to it, does that make it right? That just, that just makes it be a backdoor approach. And that backdoor approach doesn't belong here. 
these meetings are for town business, town, town stuff, not personalities, not finger pointing, not humiliating, not mudslinging. It's for town business. And that's all I have to say right now. I may have, I may have more. Yeah. <laughs> that's all for right now. Till I think of some more stuff, but I reserve, I reserve to, to be able to comment after. Well, it's good we have a <coughs> session at the end of the meeting. <laughs> As to, just in case. I'm going to have to take a few minutes here to do some business. So. <laughs> right, Mr. Esposito has. Right, there was another thing on the town hall. We get our contract to us tonight about the solar. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be addressing that tonight or not. I guess we're all set. All the permits have been approved. I don't know if we're going to be signing it, if we has to look at it again. Uh, I think it's very imperative that we uh, get the contract signed so that we can get on the list to get this uh, solar installed in, in the buildings and the uh, pump houses to save some money. After looking over our electric bills, we need to look into upstream the water. Town hall. I think the cost of it is going to be substantial, up to 30 percent, which is nothing to sneeze at. So we want to get on the list and get this done as quickly as possible. Thank you. Well, I mean, as much as I'd like to sign tonight, I mean, Jared's Putin is going to say, you know, we got to give Mike chances to be on. So, you know, we should be, again, we're coming back in two weeks from tonight, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure they're good, but you know, we need to, we need to make some time for it. I just did. Yeah. All right. Any more? Any more public comment? I just like to say something. Um, I was, I just want the town board and supervisor to know that um, I was a little disturbed with a comment that was made last town board meeting. Um, I just want the town board to be assured that in the 27 years that I've worked for the town of Princetown in the last 17 as the judge, um, the fines that have been collected by the court amount to more than $2 million, almost $5 million. Never once has there been a lost deposit, a stolen deposit, a missing deposit, everything has always balanced out on a monthly basis. Uh, the checkbooks have always balanced. And I just want the board not to be concerned about the comments that were made as to where the deposit is before it gets to the bank, because ultimately it is my responsibility. I am personally held liable if that deposit doesn't make it to the bank. The comptroller gives that. Uh, puts it right out there that says the judge is responsible for the deposit and the funds deposited to the comptrollers are their responsibility personally. So I just want the board to know that in all those years that I've served the town, there's never been a missing deposit, any money missing. A lot of times not even check, we don't take personal checks, but once in a while a check comes back that it's not cash, but we, we, we get it done. So I just wanted to say that in uh, response to uh, comments made at the last town board meeting. Can I ask a question? <laughs> um, it kind of in, kind of to you, I guess, or to, to 